This is the story of the absolutely amazing, resilient, determined, dedicated, caring, small birds called pied flycatchers, or Gwibedog Brith in Welsh, which travel thousands of miles every year from West Africa to bring up their chicks on our patch, beside the River Severn in Mid Wales, near the small market town of Llanidloes. We are enthusiastic amateur bird watchers. For the last 20 odd years, we've been taking part in the annual Montgomeryshire Bird Survey. For the Montgomery Wildlife Trust in North Paris. It's really interesting seeing how the local bird populations ebb and flow over the years. And also benefits larger organisations such as the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds and the BTO, the British Trust for Ornithology, to monitor population fluctuations, seeing which birds are thriving and sadly which birds are declining. Then a few years ago my sister bought us a bird cam box as a Christmas present. It meant we could watch and record short clips of the birds that decided to nest in the box. The new nest box stayed empty for a couple of years as the birds got used to it. And then, amazingly, a pied flycatcher pair showed up and turned it into their home. They beat off stiff competition from blue and great tit pairs. We watched the pair bring up their family of baby flycatchers. Right through from building the nest to laying the eggs and hatching the young then rearing them for the next couple of weeks. Not just feeding them making endless trips to bring back yummy caterpillars but diligently cleaning out their youngsters poop until finally the young birds fledged just a few yards from our kitchen window from that moment on we were hooked on these amazing birds and decided it was time to find out more about other pairs on our patch the first stop was the BTO website where we found out more about becoming nest recorders. We also ordered new nest boxes. We met Kerry, our local bird roomer, and found out more from her about pied flycatchers, their habits and preferences. The boxes we already had were moved lower down the trees so that they were easier to access and monitor the eggs and birds. Then we numbered them and including the bird cam box, there were 15 boxes in total. Wow! According to the RSPB, there are between 17 to 20,000 pairs of pied flycatchers breeding in the UK each year. There are small birds just 13 centimetres long and weigh just 12 to 15 grams. The males are distinctly black and white, whilst the females are brown and white. Both sexes have black beaks and brown legs. Pied flycatchers recently moved from red to amber on the lists of birds of conservation concern, which means their numbers are improving. By October, the pied flycatchers have headed south on their long journey to West Africa, where they spend just over half the year. West is best when it comes to their favourite breeding grounds in the UK, Wales and the northwest of England being their favoured spots. Individuals will return to the same spot year after year, mainly in mature deciduous woodland where their favourite food of insects and oak tree caterpillars flourish. Well, as things turned out, we started monitoring our nest boxes for the BTO in 2020. The year of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was actually the perfect year to start nest recording. As due to lockdown, we couldn't go anywhere. And then, suddenly, on the 8th of April, we saw our first pied flycatcher on our patch. It was the male. He arrived, identified a suitable nesting site, and then waited to show it off to the female. She arrived nearly 10 long days later on the 17th of April. Over the next few days, many more pied flycatchers streamed in and started to claim their nest boxes. Once the birds start to make a nest, it is usually possible to identify which species has moved in, as pied flycatcher nests are mainly constructed out of twigs and leaves, whilst great and blue tip nests are made of moss and sheep wool. As nest monitors, we walked a route around our patch every three to four days to record the progress of nest building. And then, huge excitement, egg laying. The first eggs were spotted on the 1st of May. Three eggs. Pied flycatcher eggs are just gorgeous. Duck egg blue. One is laid every day. Until there are between five to eight in a clutch. Great tit eggs are white and speckled brown by contrast. Our pied flycatcher pairs laid eggs in eight boxes altogether. A total of 58 eggs. Once the clutch is complete, the female pied flycatcher starts to incubate the eggs. She sits on them all the time, except for trips out to feed. It usually takes about two weeks before the embryos in the eggs have matured into baby 
baby birds. Which are then ready to hatch. The baby birds emerge from their eggs looking very helpless. Totally dependent on the food their parents bring for them. We enjoyed watching their first few days. They grow so fast. And before long are looking like baby birds instead of strange reptilian creatures. It takes about 16 to 17 days after hatching for the birds to fledge. Birds that survive fledging and migration typically live for two years. Though the oldest recorded live for nine. Our pied flycatchers were doing really well. Then suddenly the weather took a turn for the worse. And after a dry, sunny and warm month for most of May. At the end of the month it turned very windy indeed for a couple of days. We lost an entire clutch on the 27th of May. We were devastated. But the worst was yet to come. And after an incredibly wet, cold and windy 4th and 5th of June. We did our regular tour of the boxes on the 6th of June. To discover to our horror that all the remaining baby flycatchers had died. Except for two. It was a huge shock. Kerry ringed the remaining two chicks on 9th of June. That was a big moment. Kerry was a huge support and encouraged us to continue. We decided that after all our learning, it was important to keep going. And agreed to monitor the pied flycatchers again in 2021. Spring 2021 turned out to be much colder than 2020. But the pied flycatchers instinctively shifted their arrivals and breeding patterns to slightly later in the year. To make sure there would be enough caterpillars to feed their young. The first male pied flycatcher was spotted the week beginning the 18th of April, a whole 10 days later than the previous year. It was another two weeks before the females appeared in the week beginning the 2nd of May, again a fortnight later than 2020. First a few twigs and leaves and then full nests with their beautifully shaped cups appeared in a total of nine nest boxes during the first half of May. The first eggs were laid by the 13th of May. The last not until the 6th of June in a nest box that had just seen the successful fledging of a brood of great tits. All in all, we counted a total of 53 eggs, five less than the previous year. To be honest, we were just so grateful to have any nests at all. Unfortunately, the pied flycatchers lost out to the great tits in the bird cam box this year. And one of the pied flycatcher nests was abandoned with no eggs being laid at all. Meanwhile, the bluebells flowered, beautiful as ever. The cuckoo flew by up towards the higher hills near the source of the River Severn. And our first pied flycatcher chicks hatched. By 2nd of June we had six youngsters in box number eight. As more eggs hatched and the numbers of young pied flycatchers grew, we raised our hopes. Maybe this year we could relax and just enjoy the growing birds. Then on the 18th of June we were knocked sideways on one of our regular visits to find that the five youngsters in box number five had been predated. There was evidence that probably a grey squirrel had reached in through the hole and pulled out the youngsters. Just a few yards along the riverbank we found box number seven had been completely completely ripped apart. A whole corner was missing and all the chicks were gone. So once again we witnessed nature at its cruelest. It's actually perfectly normal for small mammals and other birds to raid smaller birds' nests to feed their own families. Fortunately most of the remaining youngsters continued to grow and thrive. Kerry and Andy were able to ring a total of 15 chicks which was wonderful. And we believe a further 14 fledged successfully. So a massive improvement on the previous year. 29 chicks instead of two. Needless to say, the young birds would face many challenges in the coming weeks, including the ongoing risk of predation. And not least, an incredible journey of thousands of miles to their wintering grounds in West Africa. We have learned a huge amount already from our first two years as BTO nest recorders and now look forward to year three in 2022. Plans for the winter include replacing some of our older nest boxes, making it harder for predators to gain access to the eggs and chicks. Meanwhile, we're getting quick at adding data to the BTO online system and can continue to help build a picture of the pied flycatcher populations in the Upper Severn Valley. One day we may be truly lucky and discover that one of the youngsters Kerry Ring to returns to our boxes to raise a family of its own. That would be truly amazing. So our pied flycatcher journey has really just started. If you want to find out more about how to become a BTO nest recorder then check out the BTO website. The more we find out about these birds the more we can help them thrive. Thrive.